So I have been known to switch between desktop environments and window managers, you know, a lot. I've even made videos talking about why I do that. I get bored very easily. I have severe ADD when it comes to my setup. I want to change things, freshen things up. It keeps my workflow working for me because it means I don't have to get bogged down in the look and feel stuff so much. It just allows me to have a fresh feeling things and that has enabled me to keep my workflow the way that I want it. But there is a severe cost to that and I'm not talking about the time it takes to set that stuff up because the vast majority of the time that needs to go into all of these window managers and stuff has already been spent. I've set up every window manager to my liking to some extent. So, you know, like Hyperland, I have all the themes I need for Hyperland and i3 and Qtile and Xmonad. I have all that stuff. It's all set up. They're all in my dot files. Installing them and, and putting them on my computer that I'm using doesn't take any time at all. So the time isn't the cost. The cost is actually stability. And in the past, I didn't care, right? I tried new things. I had a lot of things installed alongside one another when they really probably shouldn't have been. And it didn't really matter to me because I was okay when something did go wrong, switching to something else or fixing it, right? I was okay with that time spent. It was oftentimes a learning experience and I could go to you guys and actually, you know, make a video about it or whatever. But there comes a time in every man's life when you just need shit to work, right? You just need stability. And I reached this point with, an, with uh, the distro a year and a half ago. Like I, I was done distro hopping. I wanted to find my forever home in terms of distros. And it took me a while. I did, I, you know, I tried Fedora. I thought maybe a Gen 2 based distro was going to be the thing. Uh, and then I fell on OpenSUSE and I've been on OpenSUSE now for over 300 days and I'm happy as can be. So I, found, I got to that place with distros. I found a home and I have no interest in leaving, you know, it behind. But I didn't reach that point with window managers and desktop environments. I was still switching back and forth. At one point, prior to doing a reinstall of OpenSUSE just to clean some stuff up here the last few days, I had probably 12 window managers installed and two, maybe three different desktop environments installed all on the same computer. And I used the vast majority. Now, there was a couple there that I never got into, like OpenBox or ISWM. Those things came with OpenSUSE. Uh, or with something that I installed, I don't even remember at this point. But for the most part, I used all of them. I switched back and forth between them often, sometimes multiple times a day. It was ridiculous. And that's not the most stable way to live. Not only in terms of, you know, like your mental health or whatever, but also technologically, when you have that much stuff installed and you have to manage it all and stuff like that, oftentimes stuff breaks a lot. And that's not the experience that I want to have anymore. So I have gotten to a point now where I was with a distro a year and a half ago or a year ago. I'm at the point now where I want stability and I need something that I know I can just come here to my computer, do whatever it is that I need to do or not do it in the case of tonight. Like tonight I set out to make a video and I decided I was going to make the video, but then I got delved into Nginx and that took up the whole hour that I was supposed to be making a video. That's beside the point. <laughs> but the, the, the point is, is I can come to my computer, do whatever it is that I want to do, and I don't have to worry about coming to my computer and something having broken, right? Lately, or be before my switch to this new way of doing things, I was using Hyperland a lot. And I've talked about Hyperland being very, very unstable, several times on the channel and on the podcast and it is it's very very unstable and it doesn't even matter if you're using the git version or the version from your repositories it's very very unstable and I, I got sick of it I got sick of every time I wanted to record a video my OBS crashing now I did file that bug and Vaxury has been helping me try to figure out what the hell's going on there but I'm just I've washed my hands of it because I need stability and my thought was originally to go to XFC because if you think stability, XFCE is like the picturesque version of stability. Now, I, uh, there's uh, someone on 
uh, Mastodon, who has asked me to take a look at LXQT. I have never actually used LXQT before, but their Wayland support's not quite there yet, and obviously X XFC's Wayland support is non-existent, and that ended up being the problem. Is that uh, as funny as it is, as ironic as it is, the guy who was so adamantly against Wayland now has an absolute need for Wayland on his PC because I have a weird monitor setup. So let me talk you through this for just a second, just because I'm rambling today. Uh, I have on my main monitor here, I have a 32 inch 1080p monitor here. And then as my second monitor, I have an, what's an L, called an LG dual up. And it's basically one big monitor, but because it has multiple inputs, I can treat it as two monitors. It's very, very cool. The problem is that it has a higher resolution than the 1080p monitor here. And unfortunately, XORG does not handle that well. We all know it. It just does, absolutely does not handle that well. And you, I was able to get XFC to scale things properly. And I even managed to... Because usually... And he, the, the weird thing is when you do get the scaling properly on XFC, when you go move a, your cursor to the non-scaled monitor, the cursor gets huge humongous. Like, I'm talking comically large. I was able to solve that problem too, but I was not able to this time solve the screen tearing, which is a XORG classic. Everyone knows... Screen tearing on Xorg is a thing. There have been probably 10 or 15 different ways of actually working around screen tearing, depending on what graphics card you have or whatever. I tried all of those this time, all of the ones that I know, every trick that I, in the book to get rid of the screen tearing on XFC, it didn't work. I was, it was just, I, the, the one that, I, that almost always works is the adding tear free option to on in the Xorg configuration file. That prevented XORG or f that prevented XFC rather from even loading. So I realize now that I'm going to have to stick with Wayland. So the next thing I thought about was, well, I have a problem with Plasma. Like I talked about in my Plasma Six review, how stable Plasma Six has been, and it was very actually stable at that time. But since then, there have been updates, and in traditional KD fashion, they've ruined that stability. Now every time I use Plasma and I come back to it, my computer after it's gone to sleep and turn it back on for whatever reason, this monitor here is completely blank. You can see the mouse, but the panels and the wallpaper are gone. And you have to restart or log out and log back in because there's no way to restart KWIN, at least as far as I could tell in a Wayland session, unlike the XFC or the XORG session. So Plasma was out. I wanted stability. And honestly, I needed a Wayland session that would provide that for me. And that's how I ended up on GNOME. So as you guys can see here, yeah, I'm on GNOME. <laughs> and, and yes, I, I like I told you, I've been messing around with Nginx all night. <laughs> I'm still in the early stages. I do actually have it up and running, which is cool. I'm following a tutorial. I found a tutorial that I could actually you know, follow, which is harder than you'd think it'd be. Again, beside the point, but I'm using GNOME. I have it all set up the way that I want it to set up or whatever. You know, it looks basically like Mac OS, which is whatever. <laughs> But if I'm going to use a desktop environment, I want it to look pretty and have all my bells and whistles, and it does. I've done some theming, or at least as much theming as GNOME lets you do. And I've been using it now for three and a half days. And there's things that I have to say. So first off, you all know that this is not the first time I've tried GNOME. I've tried GNOME many times. Many, many times. I've made videos about trying GNOME at least three times. I've, I've challenged myself to use GNOME for six months, like four months ago, or at this point, probably six months ago, and I failed spectacularly many times. Uh, so I'm not challenging myself this time to use GNOME. I, I have no expectations that I'm actually going to stay here, but it has provided the stability that I need. And that's the thing that I need the most right now. I don't need all the flashy features of Plasma as much as they are cool. I just need the damn thing to work all the time and that's really this this video wasn't about me switching to gnome i'm not going to put gnome in the title or anything like that um, i don't think anyways unless i come up with a flashy one like that i, I don't know <laughs> um anyways i i don't know this this video isn't about me switching to gnome it's more about how i i think that overall when you're following the linux journey if there is such a thing a generalized thing 
that there comes a point where your tinkering in, your interest in tinkering fades away because they always say Linux is for tinkers, right? And it absolutely is. If you like to tinker, you are going to love Linux. But I think that at least in some areas, as you go along that journey, eventually you're going to get tired of tinkering with the same things over and over again. Like now my tinkering has moved, like I haven't gotten rid of my tinkering at all. That has just moved over to the home lab where I can mess around with Nginx and Docker and NFS and AutoFS and all these cool things that I'm learning and hopefully we'll make some videos about here pretty soon. But my tinkering on my main desktop where I need to do actual work like for my job or for the YouTube channel or whatever, I'm done tinkering. I no longer want to do that. And I think that everyone eventually reach, reaches that point with certain things in their lives, especially when it comes to Linux and open source. Also, I just realized this whole time, normally I have OBS up there, so I remember to look at the camera. <laughs> now I'm staring down here, and you guys are like, what the hell, why the hell isn't he looking at the camera? Dumbass. Let me, let me fix that. There we go. <laughs> I remember how to make videos. It's, it's Gnome. I'm going to have to, it's good. I'll just blame Gnome for the whole damn thing. Anyways, just a rambly little video tonight that I decided to make after spending my actual video making time with Nginx. So, there you go. Uh, I am using Gnome. I'm, I don't think that I'll make any more videos about it. I just want to do it, okay? Because if I make it a big deal and like, oh my god, I'm switching to Gnome. Here's a challenge for everybody to switch to Gnome with me. I did that. It didn't work. And I looked like an idiot because I only used it for like three weeks. I don't even know if it was three weeks. It didn't, wasn't, didn't last for very long. This time, I just want the stability, and I'm hoping that GNOME is the solution for that. I'm on the hunt for something that actually works all the time. And despite my qualms with GNOME and its workflow and its developers being stingy, you know, whatever, I need and hope that GNOME provides the stability that I'm looking for at the moment. And if it does, you know, then I'm a GNOME user, which is not something that I ever wanted to say for sure. Anyways, just as a side note, Plasma, please fix all your bugs and I'll happily use Plasma. I would much rather be a Plasma user than a GNOME user, but Plasma's never been stable. <laughs> like, even when I thought it was going to be stable, here comes along an update, and that's the last thing that I want to see, is because when there's an update, Plasma, if you know what I mean. Anyways, that's it for this one. I have decided to do audio a little bit differently on the channel. I'm no longer recording the audio alongside my video as I normally do, so hopefully I actually have audio for this video, and I don't have to go record it again, and hopefully it sounds fairly decent, because I, I just want to test it out and see if my workflow can be, you know, better than it was before. That'd be happy for me. Anyways, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on this whole thing, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuscast. You can support me on Ko-fi or YouTube. Those links will also be in the video description. Uh, if you want to find all of my videos on PeerTube, I also have some of them over on TIL vids. That link too will be in the video description. In other words, check out the video description. There's a whole bunch of awesome stuff down there. You can click on that stuff and get cool things. Usually more of me, which is always a good thing, right? Anyways, <laughs> it's, a, it's a new ending. Who the hell knew? Anyways, uh, thanks for everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you. The channel's just not been anywhere near, we're anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, honestly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I do believe I have a couple people to still add to the end screen credits, which have has been waiting for a while. I will get there. I promise. Anyways, you can also check on check to, to the store shop at thelinuscast.org. Forgot to pimp that out earlier. Uh, check that out for cool awesome merch. I'll see you next time. <laughs>